south of Baltimore, nearly 4,000 miles, lies a city that was born a capital, Lima, Peru, the great metropolis of the Spanish colonial empire, and for two centuries, a chief stronghold of the old world in the new. The city of Kings, Francisco Pizarro City, was founded in 1535 on the shores of the River Rimac. Eight miles in from the sea, the rainless desert to her north, the Andes at her back. Look out your hotel window in Lima, and you will see a modern city, though much of old Lima remains. It is a charming and comfortable place. Though the equator is only 800 miles away, the temperature rarely goes above 70. There are dozens of little penthouses, which flat roof architecture makes possible. This is a city on top of a city with a life of its own. No city in our Western world has a more interesting history. In early days, Lima was the source from which Spanish influence and culture spread over South America. Here was the center of political power, of social life, and of commerce. When in 1821, San Martin's army gave Peru her independence, a new Lima began. Regal pomp gave place to the ways of a young republic. Today, the new Lima is more and more like other modern cities the world over. Lima's old churches are a fine inheritance from colonial days, and equally enduring is the people's devotion to their faith. child of whatever social group grows up in a setting in which the church is a constant factor. Even the youngsters take entirely for granted their contributions to the charities of the church. At the racetrack, the visitor encounters the leisure class. Lima's population includes many wealthy land-owning families who are the present-day representatives of the immensely rich aristocracy of the old Spanish days. The middle class is in evidence too, as in racetrack crowds everywhere. In days of old, Peru had no middle class at all. It is still comparatively limited in number, but it is on the increase owing to the city's industrial and commercial development. Horse racing is gradually supplanting the bullfight in the affections of the people. It is always good weather for racing. It seldom rains in this part of the world, although there is a heavy fog almost every day. Back in the city's busy streets, one old Spanish tradition shows no sign of surrender, for it is siesta time. It is high noon, and everybody is about to close up shop. Even the busiest storekeeper still takes his two hours off at midday. He bolts his doors, hangs out his sign, and goes home. During this period, he eats a long, leisurely luncheon, visits with his family, and takes a nap. comes back to work, and the streets open their eyes slowly, and are alive and busy again.
is in the earthquake belt, which reaches all the way along the west coast of both Americas. Occasionally, the quiet city is so shaken that the older houses, built often of plaster and bamboo for a mild, rainless climate, suffer a good deal of damage. After each earthquake in former days, the city cleared up the debris and went on with a sort of resignation. But today, there is a different point of view. There is a definite plan for gradually rebuilding the city to withstand the ravages of earthquakes. Well-planned building programs are not unusual in Latin America. Every capital has its changing skyline. But here in Lima, the new construction is going on with uncommon enthusiasm. A good deal of the city is to have a new look and its houses a new solidity and comfort. Already there is some better housing for the city's workers. The vendor of shaved ice and bright pink syrup is drawing his young clientele from much better homes. Popular restaurants are rapidly increasing in number. They serve the hearty food of the country. Rice, fish, meat and bread for about five cents in North American money per meal. They meet a basic need of the population. Better food, more food. Although Peru is an agricultural country, farming methods were for many years inadequate to provide enough food for the people. The Hospital Obrero, for workers and their families, is one of the finest in South America and a part of Peru's answer to her serious health problem. Clinic patients buy all bottles and have them filled with prescriptions from the hospital pharmacy. These people have already paid a form of social security tax, which entitles them to receive hospital care for themselves and their families. These are the workers, cab drivers, construction laborers, waiters, clerks, all these and their family. Many of the patients have tuberculosis, which is widespread in Peru. The best equipment money can buy and advanced methods of treatment are available here. The profession of nursing is achieving a new status in Peru. Until recent years, girls from good families were simply not permitted to become nurses. The work was looked down on as second rate, unworthy. That is changing now. There is arising a new ideal of the profession's dignity and of its opportunity for service. student of folk art and of cherished old customs 
observes with interest the sale of these figurines. These truly religious folk use them in their churches at Christmas time to form the Nascimento, a sort of pageant in miniature of the coming of the Christ child. And when it is assembled, young and old gather in adoration, feeling a sense of participation in the ageless story. of indigenous art has its conspicuous champions, like Julia Codicido, who loves her people and the works of their hands. Through her own painting, she perpetuates their customs and their strong faces. Side by side with this folk art is the new and zealous emphasis on education. Lima's University of San Marcos has a glorious history. Founded in 1551, it is nearly a century older than any university in the United States. For more than 300 years after its founding, attendance at the university was a prerogative of the rich. But today, young men and young women too from the less privileged groups are coming to San Marcos for inexpensive education. Not in the traditional academic courses, so much as in engineering, industrial chemistry, medicine. A few old customs still prevail. For instance, the oral examinations held in the chapel, where in the old days the monks who founded San Marcos worshipped. student draws a numbered slip from an urn, thus selecting by lot the questions to be asked. The committee of professors is kind but firm, and the examinations are as nerve-wracking as examinations usually are. These are serious young people, these students from Peru's increasingly significant middle class. They feel, more than most students, responsibility in the working out of their country's destiny. They believe that this new Lima, which will belong to them, must at least in part be built by them. And in the colonnaded courtyards of San Marcos, they walk and study and dream, as young people have done in university courtyards since first they were built. Steeped in history, they have always been. This, their home city, is no ordinary place. When it was the seat of the proudest European state in the New World, it was a tiny triangle of narrow streets along the slow river Rimac. They have lived to see it grow and swell and reach out toward the sea. Broad streets, green parks, tall houses, they have lived to see all these. They will see much more in their own generation. Lima was always a city to sing madrigals to her own past. But then she began to ponder her present. And the new Lima cheers her own future. <laughs> 